let's take a look at how African American slaves dealt with the inhumanity of bondage. It has a lot to do with the support, with the comfort, with the assistance they found in two systems, their families and slave religion. Slave families varied a great deal, and it depended a lot on the size of the plantation that the slave worked on. On large plantations, the family unit for many slaves was very stable. You oftentimes had two parent families on large plantations. You oftentimes had long marriages between mothers and fathers, really only broken up by death or by the sale of one of those parents. And it's important to remember that these long, stable marriages were encouraged by those slave masters. It's seen as the Christian thing to do. It also means more offspring and more slaves and more profit for the slave master. On smaller plantations, on those farms that weren't very big, especially in the upper south where the slave trade was much more frequent, spouses, slave spouses may be miles away. Uh, so quite often you ended up with the mother, the female, as the acting head of the family because quite often um, she's the one doing all the child rearing along with any female relatives who might be on the same farm with her. Family is very important to slaves. We know of this from journals that slave masters left and repeated examples of them using family connections as leverage for behavior with slaves. Threats of uh, selling off a loved one, threats of splitting up a married couple, show us how important the family was to slaves. We also know that many runaways would not always run straight for the north. Many runaways would go and would be caught many times in the area of family whether it was to try to liberate a family member before fleeing north, or maybe just to see a loved one again. Uh, many runaway slaves were, uh, were known to go to, and were some, some were captured in the areas of their families. We also have proof of the importance of the slave family after emancipation, after the Civil War. There are literally thousands of African Americans throughout the South looking for relatives. One of the main objectives of the Freedmen's Bureau that's established after the Civil War is to help those former slaves find relatives. Slave families could also be non-traditional. Now, the extended family was important. We know that from the fact that many babies, many slave babies, were named for grandparents, even if they never met those grandparents. But adoption... Um, was very common for slave children. So if a slave child was separated from their parents, many of those slave children would be adopted into another slave family on that plantation. So we, you have many non-blood relationships in slave families as well. Now, on top of that, all of the slaves on a plantation were part of what they considered to be a family. Um, elders, those people the same age as, you, as a, a slave's mother and father would be referred to as uncle and auntie. Whether they were the brothers and sisters by blood uh, with the parents or not, uh, that generation directly above uh, one slave would be referred to as uncle and auntie. And anybody within your same generation, anybody close to you in age, would be referred to as brother or sister. Uh, these were very common phrases used by slaves throughout the plantations in, and small slave farms in the South. And it really sends a message. It conveys that they could depend on each other. They don't just have to rely on their blood family. They can rely on that non-traditional extended family of all the slaves on the plantation. It also is important to us as historians because it allowed those folk traditions things like songs, things like dance, things like slave stories, to be passed down um, with greater likelihood of it making it to us or making it down on paper because those aren't just shared with 
three or four or five people in a traditional family. They're shared with everyone on the plantation. In summary, slave families gave slaves a strong sense of kinship. And this is one of the things that's very important to not losing hope. And what we'll see in the next video, slave religion combines with uh, slave families to really help make slaves, despite the fact that they were in bondage, feel like they were members of a community.